Hello, everybody, and welcome to Quantum Leap Revisited, our weekly show where we watch the classic Quantum Leap show. And as usual, I have this wonderful panel of gentlemen with me uh, to my right, right here. Is it to my right? Yes, it is, I guess. That would be Sean Crummel, also known as the real Sean Crummel. And uh, Sean is an artist. He has his own YouTube channel where he draws, where he does uh, retro comic reviews, where he does streams about pop culture and entertainment. And he has his own uh, sticker collection on Etsy, uh, which you could find at Real Sean Crummel Art at Etsy. Real Sean Crummel Art. Etsy.com. You know, I was so close this time. So close. I really almost got it. It did. I was surprised. <laughs> I, I tried so hard this time, and yet somehow I still messed it up. And then uh, next we have the script doctor. Uh, script doctor is uh, an experienced screenwriter. He has his own Patreon where he teaches and guides people in the field of screenwriting. Uh, he also has his own YouTube channel with a lot of great videos and interviews and things like that. But in recent months, uh, he's launched his own show called Scripts on Saturdays. Uh, I've had the pleasure of being a guest on it a few times. And uh, on that show, he looks into screenplays that are being considered by big studios or were considered by big studios and uh, 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 reads them and analyzes those uh, screenplays that are kind of in demand and being considered by the big studios. I probably didn't explain that that well, but I tried my best, and <laughs> it was quite good. <laughs> Did better than nothing, I suppose. How's it going, script? It's going well. I'm happy to be here. I, I was, lost my voice last week, so I, I missed the show, but I was happy to uh, get it back just in time for this one. You bounced back relatively quickly. <laughs> I had that happen to me a few weeks ago, and I was really struggling for a few weeks, so I think that you actually bounced back really quickly, and we're really grateful to have you back. Uh, Thank you. Next... We have uh, Ro, Ro from the Scarif podcast, also known as Ro from the Scarif Scuttlebutt podcast, also known as Ro, the co-founder of the Red 5 Network, a group of uh, podcasters and YouTubers, uh, and Ro is their leader. Uh, in addition to that, uh, Ro is a veteran in the broadcast news field, and he also has a lot of uh, knowledge and expertise when it comes to uh, technical uh aspects and equipment uh behind productions and uh he brings also a lot of knowledge about science fiction a lot of other things and overall he's a somewhat decent guy and we're we're grateful to have him here what's up everybody <laughs> and, and then finally <laughs> nick loves it when i introduce him finally he in his local town nick is the local minister he's the local locksmith He's the consultant to the sheriff and to the fire department uh, when it comes to locksmithing uh, affairs. And uh, he even goes out with them on special, uh, I don't know what to call it, but he works with them. And in addition to that, he also uh, has his own ranch where he raises goats. And he's an expert in science fiction. How's it going, Nick? No, oh, he's He's muted. You're totally muted. Nobody can hear you. Let me... I may have to log out and come back. No, why? We can hear no, you now. We can hear you now. Oh, you can hear yeah. me? Okay. Yeah. yeah, now, now. We didn't um, hear you before. And I forgot to say that you have two YouTube channels. One is called The Backyard Tardis. The other one is called Adventures in Locksmithing. Both great channels. Uh, how's it going, Nick? It's going good. And, you know, I, I always get a chuckle when you say um, that I... Uh, 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 consult with the sheriff because usually they hire me out to do it but uh i actually did some consulting for them the past couple of days because they had change of employees and they didn't know how certain things worked and they're like how does this go and i'm like you're asking me so uh but look yeah, look as your <laughs> friend i know every five minutes you're doing something with the sheriff and the fire department so i assume that they need your expertise there uh, exactly and under what format and how it all works i don't know but judging by some of the videos you upload that they're you're in suspicious uh <clears throat> breaking bad type of territory uh it seems like they, they trust you for some kind for you know for some reason and they bring you uh to help them with some of these things and i think that's pretty cool he's part of the municipal's attache something like that yeah <laughs> 
So today we have uh, uh, Quantum Leap. It's the season two, episode 14 episode, uh, All Americans. And uh, it's certainly an interesting one. And I think we're going to have a, a lot to say about it. So I guess uh, without further ado, oh, just to also acknowledge, we have a lot of great people in the chat. Melvin Deeply, who a lot of times actually watches later. Uh, Jeremy Winfield, Tex Rogers, Ron Donafero. We got... Uh, did I miss anybody? Ron, Jeremy, Tim Talk, Tim's Talk. Tim's Talk, yeah, Tim's Talk. Trinidad. It's Ryan. I was just looking forward to her being here so I can say her name. Yeah. But uh, in Sugar. any case, <clears throat> maybe maybe she's running late. In any case, let's uh, let's jump into this episode. Yes, sir. And uh, I'm going to share the screen. Give me one second. Present. Okay. Is the screen sharing? Yes. Yes. Okay. And then maybe I'll... There you go. It looks even... As Ro always says, bigger is necessarily better. He says that? I, I always pin that quote on Ro, and he never knows <laughs> I know. why. <laughs> I know. I'm I just, thinking, I don't know, maybe I said it once. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think you've ever said it, but I love saying it because I don't know. I don't know why it makes me laugh that I've just taken a quote and pinned it on you. Like <laughs> oh, Lisa's here. Oh, she's here. I had Excellent. I had a good feeling. Yeah. <clears throat> I had a good feeling about it. Nice to see you, Lisa. Lisa could try and uh okay so we're here in this episode this very very interesting episode first of all we have this um narration and this time i i think in this one it's already deborah pratt narrating right this is correct the first one for deborah pratt last <clears throat> week episode was a guy yeah that was like the a-team dude or what was it one that sounded right. like him but this yeah. one this one now is deborah pratt but it's a longer one later over time they kind of fine-tune this this opening but it's already a step in the direction of what we're going to see you know what also, I noticed? What? Um, I I think somebody had mentioned either through research or when we we're looking at IMDb or something early on that uh, Scott uh, Bakula was talking about how he hated the one shot where he's hitting the baseball left-handed. I guess in in the opening. I noticed this maybe maybe for the first time or maybe not or this is the first time I'm noticing that the the edit of the open is slightly different um, in this opening on on this particular episode and they cut before they do the complete before Scott does that complete swing which um, if uh, if that uh, news was true that he didn't like the way he swung at it because he's a right-handed or whatever it was the, the reason was that uh, he might have asked the editor to, to, to cut before it completes. But that's the first time I noticed that it wasn't complete all the way. It and stops like midway. It, no, he hit it. No, it's no, very it, it, possible. I've heard him before say that he didn't like that. I yeah. also... Uh, I remember him saying that he kind of he actually played baseball and he didn't like that he has to not uh, do it the way he wanted it wanted to do it. He always looks at that episode and he gets annoyed at that part. I actually saw an interview with him. But he said it, so I agree with you, Ro. Like there was something like that. And by this point, maybe he had a little more clout, and he just told uh, Donnie Belisarius, uh, Belisario. He probably told him, "Hey, Donnie, can you cut out that annoying thing?" And then well, they, they probably get, I guess they just seeing, seeing the episodes by the time they got to that point, because again, they're they're filming way ahead of schedule of debut. But one thing you have to remember in that episode, we watch it here. He doesn't hit the ball in the episode. He actually misses hmm. and um, he, uh, the, he runs the, walk. He yeah, runs. He, he walks it off or he runs. And, he runs because the catcher dropped it. And, it's a catcher right, dropped right, it, and then the next guy hits the ball and then he runs into the, the home. So he, he was supposed to miss it. <laughs> they also right. say uh i don't know if this is accurate but on imdb deborah pratt they have her uncredited but voice of ziggy yes doing the narration so ziggy is has a female voice 
even though they refer to Ziggy as a him. Yes. <laughs> <It's confusing. laughs> well, they, they call Captain Janeway, sir. So they anything can happen. Mister, so. Right. Exactly. Ooh. Oh yeah, yeah. Everybody's talking about um, Lance Legault. That's the, uh, the actor that uh, did the voiceover last week mm -hmm. in the chat. Oh, Lance Legault, that's the guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He had that one time. You can tell his kids that it was the one time he narrated Quantum Leap. And they'll be like, Dad, we don't care. Oh, I didn't know he was born in Chicago. Yeah. <laughs> also directed by John Cal Callum. Well, uh, let's look at this thing here. So it's showing the thing and the, the talking of Ziggy, like, you know, of Deborah Pratt as Ziggy. Uh, I like this opening much better than the male talking. I think that this is a good direction. And uh, again, it's still not the final version, but it is interesting that they're already showing it. Uh, in these early ones, just so you know, they talk about the project losing funding, which is why Sam Beckett goes into the accelerator. I think that in future ones, they kind of make it shorter and don't even talk about the funding. They just mm -hmm. say that he went into accelerator and that's it. Mm-hmm. But in any case, he arrives, he's in a football player, and uh, not knowing really what to do, he ends up, uh, well, he didn't do it yet, I guess. Uh, I like how even though he's completely fumbling it, mm -hmm. they still win. <laughs> yeah, that, he like throws it up in the air and the guy catches it like a backwards lateral or something. Right, he throws I mean, it up. You here. have to have a great team to have the quarterback suddenly just like dropping the ball and still <laughs> win the game. Right. But whatever, we, we suspend disbelief. He sends the thing, the guy catches it. They win the game. Every, everybody's happy. And, uh, this, there's a great line from Al here. I think he oh says something God. like, uh, eh, that the, this winning pass that Sam did, it was kind of like a $10 hooker. Uh, not a pretty sight, but gets the job done. I think he said something like that. <laughs> yep. Yes. And at that point, I'm like, oh, Al is back. <laughs> He's Al seen is... the last cu the last couple of episodes. Uh, the script uh, for Al and those little quips seemed a little on the weak side. Mm -hmm. That's that's why True. this one was this one to me seemed like uh, you know pretty strong uh, right out of the gate. A return to form for Al. Yes. <laughs> So they're here in the locker room. Uh, he's a young man, I guess, Latino, supposed to be. Yep. And so is his friend, sort of. Sort yes. of? <laughs> sort of. They're, well, I mean, they're both. They're, I guess, yeah. His friend comes, can, is, uh, his mother's Mexican, and she crossed the Rio to give birth to this boy here. <laughs> the Rio. Right. Eddie and Chewy. And it was grand day. Yeah, so. <laughs> you know, I just want to say. He is Jesus. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I just want to say, as the only Mexican on the panel, <laughs> thank God, one and a half seasons in, and finally I get some representation. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not sure it was the representation you were looking for. I know. When I watched it, I thought to myself, Ro must be annoyed watching this. <laughs> I was. Every, every other, um, the thing that annoys me, with stuff like this is the fake English accent from actors who are supposed to in the show, supposed to speak Spanish uh, having English as their second language. And I'm fluent in, in both English and Spanish. And I, I don't recognize a, an accent like that. It's very, I guess it's very like Hollywood stereotypical. Do you know what I mean? It's so how I talk to my wife. It's kind of weird because there, there's some region, regions of California where you actually do hear that accent. Mm. Yes. Um, so yeah, the borders are weird, though. School. California and Texas, you know, because like that area used to be Mexico. <laughs> so it's 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 a little weird when you get uh, like that mixture of uh, uh, I call it like almost like Tex-Mex food. It's it's like its own culture almost. Sorry, Nick. Yeah, the, uh, this is one of the things. So, like, um, for for junior high, I was in a little farming town outside Modesto that had a ton of a Hispanic community, and there was a uh, gangs and all that stuff um, that 
the slang that they talked and the, like a lot of the stuff you see in the movies, that's how they talk. They would take Spanish class and flunk <laughs> <laughs> yeah. because they don't know how to speak proper. Sp they, they speak such bad slang. They think, oh, this will be easy classes. Like, right. <clears throat> no, there's lots not. of people that keep, can't speak English either. <laughs> Yeah, I don't. It was weird though because they're talking. To, they wouldn't talk to each other in English. Some of these people, I think, they probably would speak Spanish to each other, and then they kind of slip in a word of Spanish. Mm -hmm. it, it all seems. But you know, back back in those years, I think that uh, a lot of times they they didn't like to stay as true as pot, like do subtitles and have people talking in Spanish. In reality, I feel like it probably would have been necessary for them to speak more Spanish than we saw here. Well, they they offer an excuse when he's talking to Al. He says, I think I know Spanish. He's like, yeah, you do. So you can think of it as like Star Trek and like a universal translator. They just automatically start understanding each other like partway through the episode or whatever. So they can just get on with the story. Mm -hmm. I guess so. I guess so. Well, but I, I, and, I, and you'll have a lot of these ones that know both languages. Like when they're at school, they'll they'll swap on the fly you know, if there's uh, one gringo there in the group, they'll start talking English. Uh, but that, that Spanish word here or there will slip in. But when they do this family gathering where everybody's Spanish, realistically, they'd be speaking Spanish. Yeah. It's, yeah, it, yeah. It, something about this doesn't come off as, as very authentic, but you know what? And not listening to Richie Valens. <laughs> How dare you, Ro? Well, well this Wait, whole script... Uh, feels like someone was like oh we need to do uh you know a hispanic episode what uh, we'll do a sports one what what are what uh what do mexicans like oh they, they like football okay we'll do football because right and with the, like wrong the wrong football, football. Uh, uh, the chingada. i'm just gonna i'm gonna from now on i'm just gonna speak spanish in, on the show tonight that's fine <laughs> the best part about this is this scene has the uh them playing chubby checkered from uh the twist yeah. which he was on the one that came up with the twist in the radio episode. Yep. Right. Only uh, nice what, a year earlier, I technically, in his time travels? <laughs> Probably. Well, here what we have is they're doing their kind of celebration. I guess this is the fiesta. It, it's yeah, the I, after I, game party. Yeah. Right. And I, I think I must have been a little slow because seven minutes in, I didn't realize that his character was supposed to be Hispanic until this young lady started talking to him in Spanish. And then he was kind of answering. And then I started I started to put two and two together. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> they showed his face in the mirror. They showed the face in the mirror. I know, <laughs> but, I, you know, I'm, I'm colorblind. I, I'm, I'm like a coconut Mexican. You're so hip. <laughs> and then you have... Uh... La Mamacita. The Mamacita. Mm -hmm. It looks 20 there. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I'm like, wait a minute. She seems a little too young to be a mom. She, she looks like his little sister, but whatever. Right. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> my people. And then we, uh, we, start, we start young. Just like you Al. know, th this, but this establishes uh, that basically uh, the father is the. He's a widow or something, and he has a daughter. And this guy, and Sam's the daughter, is the son of that guy. But then uh, this other guy, Chewy, uh, is it, Chewy I don't know. is the friend. Eddie Chewy. is Sam. Yeah, Eddie is Sam. Chewy is the friend, and Chewy is the son of, of can't remember her name, but uh, Celia. Celia. Celia not, uh, she, uh, the, she was the best friend with um, Eddie's mom. And they were close family friends for their entire lives. Until ah, she died ah. in childbirth to the daughter. Mm -hmm. And uh, life is rough. Mm -hmm. And as uh, Nicholas, I heard him say, just a little explanation. Chewy is kind of a nickname for Jesus. Mm -hmm. Just so you know. Yeah, it's not Chewy. We have one of our one <laughs> right, of our right. it's, it's Chewy. <laughs> yeah, it's an, it's not another Star Wars reference. Although <laughs> I I was looking for one, but couldn't find one today. Probably not in the sixties, right? So then, uh, you know, during during this fiesta that they're establishing here, the friendships and how I'm trying to remember what exactly they say here. Do you remember the conversations here? Yes, Al, the, the, well, that's the restaurant. Whoa, everybody, yeah, yeah go ahead. That's <laughs> <laughs> great. Who, Script no, is first please. on the buzzer. He can answer. Script, the answer. you were the first on the buzzer. What are they talking? What are they talking okay. about here? 
So the dad is talking about uh, saving up money to buy this restaurant where everything is stainless steel and how it's going to be great for his food truck business to, to have a single location. And of course, the his his friend here, this woman that he actually quite is enamored with now, um, is questioning the logic behind that as politely as she can for, for a Mexican woman of that time. And uh, and when he and when she finds out how cheap it was, it's because someone the owner died, and she assumes that the owner died in the restaurant. He's like, no, I don't. At least I don't think so. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And uh, she she gets weird, you know vibes by that and of course he argues well listen someone may have died in your house like no i just know (laughs) no one's ever died in my house (laughs) Uh, and then she leaves to say that she's going to bring out a a mexican dish and he's like i love those it's like i'll save you one (laughs) and it's like boom you know exactly these two have got more going on Mm -hmm. that they haven't probably expressed with each other than um you expect And, and this is actually building off of him lifting her up when they won the game right after the the teaser which he then right. kind of like respectively uh, apologizes for. Um, they kind of they do a lot of planting for that thing yeah. at the at the end to work out, mm-hmm. and uh, I think it's good. I think these these are good planting. It's nice to show they have a rapport uh, and that there's some kind of tension between them, like po- uh, romantic tension. And I think that they they do it nicely. I don't think it's done badly. Right. Well, and we don't. At this point, we don't know the full thing, but I like how they put it is that he was best friends. Um, or th- there was a friendship there. So, yeah. Yeah. So he's looking after her kind of out of respect, but he's developing the feeling. So it's, you know. Uh, right. And she's kind of. She, she doesn't look bad, too. And, you know, she looks significantly younger than him and she doesn't look bad. So <laughs> if I were him, I'd also think she's rather pleasant was step it, it up step it up dad was it right before this that al told sam that uh what he's really there for because he thinks yes. or they think that chewy's gonna throw the champion i, I don't think so yet i think okay maybe now maybe oh, now yeah. he's telling him yeah. that's right there okay <clears throat> wait oh and now there's the, there's the thing about uh losing the virginity at 16 oh yeah and al, yeah, is, re- really al is al is offended <laughs> is offended that Sam would think that he only lost his virginity at 16. He said that at 16, there were already three ladies at the at three the, girls at the orphanage. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> but then you have the Ruben, the Misa, um, mustache twirling. Uh, right, exactly. Gomez like Adams. Yeah, he's like a Gomez Adams mustache twirling villain. Mm-hmm. Like eating her, her eating her pastries eating her pastries <laughs> i she is she is nice like though i do hair. like her in any case uh he, he um he basically tells her that she hasn't been paying rent so he he's he's a creative man and he thinks of other ways that she could possibly pay <laughs> even if she doesn't have the money and uh they go back and forth. No, no, uh, give me another day. Give me another this. And he's kind of all over her. And he's like, I'll write you a check. And he's like, no, you listen. So. Yeah, 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 blah, blah, blah. Like, uh, are you going to pay me one way or another? And then... Uh... You totally <laughs> sound like Dr. Evazon from Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't like you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You'll be dead. <laughs> I started, started hearing his accent there. <laughs> In any case, I tried my best. That was the main idea, and then dead on, uh, dead on accurate. And and then uh, at this point, he's like, "You don't got the money, whatever." And then like he already starts. He's about to kind of kiss her, and she doesn't even push him away because she understands the situation. But then the you know the sons come in, and he kind of shifts and pretends to be like a more decent guy, but he's mm-hmm. asking questions about uh, the game, saying that he won a thousand dollars. And he, he's sort of kind of being, he's already laying the groundwork that he wants this kid to do something for him to get some information. And mm-hmm. Sam's like, no, that's illegal. Like, stop doing this. And the right. guy's like, you know, ha, 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 like. Mustache oh, you, twirling. Mustache twirling. And then mm-hmm. before he leaves, he's like, you know, uh, don't forget that you got to take care of the thing and we're going to take care <laughs> of it one way or another. Right. And then you got th- till Friday. You got till Friday to take care of that thing we said, or else. And then uh, 
as soon as he walks out, uh, the the son is like, "What is he talking about?" She's like, "No, I was just ironing his shirt, uh, Eho." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 I, <laughs> I have worked with guys like him, Hi. and uh, I'll, when, when we get to that point where he goes to kick him out, we'll. Nicholas, I'm in the room, damn it. I'm in the room. I was going to say, was he naked and locked out of his house or something? Uh. (laughs) So that that reaction is a yes. (laughs) No, I mean, I've had that, and I think Sean is referring to a recent video of mine. (laughs) But uh, no, that that guy was Asian. (laughs) So this part, she's talking about the shirts. The shirts. Ka- Kamisas uh, of the that villain the guy, Lizo guy, and then uh, I I don't. Then he's like, J- just make sure he pays you. Like the kid is Can't sort talk. of uh, not. He feels that something's wrong, but doesn't really get it. But Sam, right. who's uh, Sam more mature and he gets it, he understands. And then he stands here and he's like, I like I like this scene. I like when when Sam stands up to the bullies. Yeah, I like that too. Uh, again, I, I don't want to talk seven hours about the new one, but one of the things about the new show is hey, you oh, you didn't see hey. scenes like this. You didn't see it like the, the guy coming out and saying, okay, like the, and the way Sam walks out here and he just says, I know why I'm here now. You 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 stay away from them. And it's just, those are the parts. that That's the part that you really know that he's a hero. He knows he's a hero. He's a hero, and and it's so important for the character. And it adds just to the charm and to the wholesomeness of the thing. It's just always great to see it. Uh, it you, you even even if you see it every time, you're always happy to see it. Yeah, he's like sometimes you get a feeling in your gut, and you just have to act on it. Yeah, and he's like tough with him. He's like saying, "Hey, this and that." And like he's like, "Oh, like I'll try to write. I'll spell it out for you if you don't understand me." And like he's all like in his face, you know. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then. Uh, this guy is like, uh, oh, you're growing up to be a man now, but don't, you know. Uh, I hope you can. I hope. I hope you're ready to be treated like one. Yes. Yeah, and then he zips off. Tu es hombre, and he drives away. Tu eres hombre. They are playing stripper music here, and then immediately Al is in the background, and I just started <laughs> laughing. <laughs> And then there's a funny part here that as they're here, uh, this girl is talking to Sam, and Al's like, "What are you doing? This the girl loves you. She'll do anything with you." And Sam's like, "Oh, Al, like, what? Well, I don't know. You doing his usual kind of goody goody thing where Sam is trying, where Al is trying to bring his attention to the ladies." Mm-hmm. Like, I think it's funny that anytime that anytime that Sam. Uh, starts to cross the line, like Al criticizes him, shames him, and Sam's like, you? But the but the but when he's being good, Al's just mm. like the devil on his shoulder, like, oh, come on, you got this opportunity. <laughs> I, I, I love how Al just takes basically the opposite of whatever Sam's take is on it. Mm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, man, there, there's True. a point I want to bring up, but we can't, it's going to spoil season four, so I'm not going to I'm gonna. I gotta bank this. It's, later. Gonna, it's gonna be a while. <laughs> yeah. Oh God! I had a quick question. Um, maybe script or anybody in the chat knows. So far, I have not seen um, Al wear uh, the same outfit twice. I know we're only we're barely into the second season here, uh, or midway through, or whatever. But um, he's worn his... a green tie more than once. That has like half circles like chopped out mm, of the, yeah. the side of it but because it's uh, it it's, one out at the same time in that uh frat party episode oh yeah yeah but like between episodes i uh his uh his wardrobe has been pretty pretty rich and pretty dynamic <laughs> yeah <laughs> well, yeah i love everything guys that doesn't believe in laundry mm-hmm. he just goes out and buys new clothes i i know people like that they just go buy new clothes and then throw them away. I can't, it boggles my mind, but there are people that do that. This part is kind of weird for me. I don't really know what they why like they really wanted to put La Bamba into this episode. Although, I'm, oh, because not... 
Al said something about Sam inventing uh, aerobics. Aerobics, because he put the song on and they all started exercising to it. But, I mean, didn't anybody ever do that prior? Mm, No, that's what they're they're saying. Because he's supposed to lead the the calisthenics. He's like, "Ah, I don't know if he just doesn't know him or he just hates him. And then they make a reference to Jane Fonda. And then he starts... he, He must have done it before... Because the coach tells Sam to this time do it right. Yeah, if he, he doesn't yeah. do the yeah. calisthenics properly. Yeah. yeah, then he has to take 15 laps or whatever. Right. And plus another right. 20. Because I mean, <laughs> when you watch a sports game, like they don't go out there and, and, and dance and do aerobics. <laughs> they do, right. you know, yeah. stretches and stuff. So, right. but stretches what he and, picked. Um, in my mind, that's like what a white guy. Oh, you know, so I'm a Spanish guy, so I'm gonna play La Bamba. <laughs> yeah, it's just exactly. like I don't know if a Spanish guy would have picked that. Well, well you remember guys... in '87, La Bamba was mm-hmm. a big, had a big resurgence back because of the movie. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's and right. It also was frequented on the radio for five years straight in most mm-hmm. regions throughout North America. <laughs> it's true. It's true. It was. It became very big. Although in this thing, they're using the original Richie Valens version and not the Los Lobos version, which was mm-hmm. heavily played. But uh, even the, probably it was cheaper to use the Richie Valens at that moment in time. Uh, you guys also talk about these ep- uh, some of these episodes being uh, not tropes, but finding inspiration like the animal house or animal frat was that the name of it animal Being like, animal, like animal, animal house, house yeah and uh this even i i remember seeing at least parts of this one growing up and uh and i always thought this feels just like la bamba with uh with football yeah exactly but mm-hmm. the actor blue diamond phillips or, blue diamond phillips yeah yeah so uh, when La Bamba came on, I was like, oh, there we are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right on cue. Be- because also in La Bamba, they had a situation where they live in kind of a place where these guys had their fiesta. Kind of reminded me of the setting where those people in the Richie Valens in La Bamba were living. Could have been the same location. Could have been. It, could, it very well could have been the same location. But yeah, it's almost like they just said, well, that movie, they made a... Uh, uh, latino family in the 60s we're doing a latino family in the 60s let's just make it look like that movie did now truthfully i don't know what it really looked like uh i don't know if it's accurate at all but they did seem to see that movie and take inspiration from it i agree at least when it comes to the visual style and then uh this is an important scene they're back in the locker and then uh, Ruben shows up and he's like, well, you know, your mom hasn't paid for a few months and <laughs> yeah. there's so many other people that she hasn't paid either. And uh, tu, tu eres hombre de la casa, which is like, you're the man of the house. You got to throw the game or uh, el partido de football or whatever it is. And uh, I'm getting some we get uh, we usually get some new tidbits and insight from you every so often, Price. <laughs> in like what that. sense and it, like you know your your identity i like that i like that <laughs> we're we're jotting some notes down here what, what did i do what did i do did i did i not now, pronounce? no now you're now you're like speaking spanish and you're a singer songwriter you could be juan gabriel for all we know <laughs> i'd prefer to be luis miguel <laughs> there you go see <laughs> tossing out the obscurities here uh in any case uh so ruben is like uh telling him this thing and he's really pressuring him and even though uh chewy doesn't want anything to do with this uh it's really starting to affect him because he understands that his mom is in trouble and he wants to help and like he he understands the situation that she's in and this ruben guy is just a big jerk but sam shows up and he knows what ruben is doing so he's like he's they start fighting and sam's really about to let him have it but then the coach shows up and this is also an interesting scene that he's like why are you guys why are you guys fighting in here so he's like no me and this guy were you know he's like we're both interested in the same girl and yeah. he's like aren't you too old to be interested in the same girl as this guy right and uh like, it's yeah, all very high, weird. high school girl too old to be a high school girl or are you uh eddie into older women right and then he does the thing that 
you know, you don't hear many teachers these days say, which is, I don't know who you are or why are you in this locker room, but if but I see you out. again, I will throw like <laughs> hell's fury behind you. Yeah. <laughs> right. And, and Ruben takes off, well, but this sets up, what were you going to say? Oh, I, I just said, I like the fact that, you know, realistically in a lot of ways, you know, the coach sees the players fighting like it's his job to discipline that. But his first priority is like, look, I can punish them, but you, you're not supposed to be here. And and that's kind of uh, one of the things that I, I loved in this because um, – you see now in a lot of these TV shows, I mean, it started with Smallville, but all the CW stuff, all these teen dramas where adults just walk onto these schools right. and yeah. get into arguments. Yeah. And it's like, what's this 30 year old doing at this high school? Like, that, that, mm-hmm. It's just not acceptable. Yeah. I'm just hanging yeah. out. In the 90s, yeah. those were all the actors. The, well, I mean, there were all the actors, but it's also really creepy. The worst part is that it kind of influenced real behavior because I remember I was still in high school uh, while Smallville was on the – well, I mean, I, I was in high school when Smallville started. So um, it was so weird because what I would see, and this only happened literally after – because I had been in high school three years at this point. Smallville had already been on for a year or two. And all of a sudden, the kids that graduated high school were coming back to high school to visit for <laughs> no reason. I think and, they were doing that when I was there too, a little. Mm-hmm. Well, it we, I never saw it for yeah. the first three years I was there. <laughs> it was just like afterwards, where I'm like, "You haven't been here in two years. What, why are you back here? What, did you flunk out of university, college? Are you so lame over there that you're trying to score girls here or with girls <laughs> that came back to? I don't know what what they were doing. It was just so odd. But it's like that's when I kind of noticed it. It's like, oh, yeah, when you have television shows, having characters just wander onto public property to integrate with um, minors, that's that's there. That's framing it up to be the norm. And I was always thought it was weird. I never did that. Yeah. I mean, in 1962, fishy things happened. And maybe, you know, <laughs> maybe this is a, a time and place where things that couldn't be explained were happening and. Nobody was trying to get down to the, the bottom of them. But but what I like is this teacher reacted in the right way. Like, right, yeah. right. Because in, yeah. in reality, if, if, if you as an adult, like, just go into a school, that's going to – You better be there to register on you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So at this point, you know, Sam is basically telling him, no, don't throw the game. And he's like, yeah, you know, you know do – do uh, just basically he'll do whatever he wants and they're they have tension between them he's like don't throw it to me don't throw it to me yeah and then they start the game it is is a weird thing because it still shows his immaturity because if he loses the bet you know he's like well don't throw it to me because i have to fail but i still want you guys to win well if they win, like he's not going to go. Well, kid, the the, the rent is paid. Mm-hmm. He's gonna lose big time. He's not gonna be cool with it. Right? No, no, he's not doing the math. In fact, he's he's doing the biggest fault. And this is what I've always had fun when writers room. Whenever we get pitched these things, whenever I guest into a writers room, I'm always like, um, if the guy needs the dude to fail in order to win the bet, if he wins the game, the guy fails, and now he's out. Now he's in more trouble than the kid. So, like, why would he ever? want to acquiesce for the rent if the guy's betting say thousands of dollars to win this game because he needs the money or at least he's eager so eager for it for that money the kids got all the powers like well if i win and you don't win your money um those people are going to be after you and then you don't have time for me <laughs> and that's always the truth and mm-hmm. it always just bugged me because i felt like i was one of the only writers that I ever brought up and every time i did they would not do that episode because they're like yeah you're right that it's exactly what would happen. It's like the good it's, lesson for everyone out there to learn. If someone tries to blackmail you, says I'm betting on you to lose, be like, well, if I win, you lose way more than I will. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Are, is, have we established that this guy is a mafia type that would do that, or is he just like a local businessman with a? Al, 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 all the details. He's this think, local guy that yeah. uh, rents specifically to immigrants so that he can blackmail them with immigration threats 
if they don't. Uh, Ruben or the other guy with the eyebrows? Because I think no, he's no, the other guy out. is just some guy. Yeah. No. Ernest they never said Borgnine. it. Yeah, they never they never said anything about Ernest Borgnine there. <laughs> yeah, they never really explained who the other guy was. I think he was just kind of the other guy. Mm -hmm. The guy yeah. that he was losing to, I guess, or winning from, depending on how you look at it. <laughs> yeah. I guess. Yeah. Right. I hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold hold this frame. Did they spell something wrong. Why is well, there a exactly. I don't plot hole. Plot hole. That is a plot hole. But who? This is like the dumbest thing ever. Who? Which? Which crew member wouldn't know that there shouldn't right. be an apostrophe between On tacos oh, or enchiladas? I mean, you didn't need to be a genius. This is this is really really that's easy. Art department. Yeah, that's, maybe it's weird. It's 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 taco possessive, enchilada possessive. Yeah, I was gonna say, <laughs> yeah. like maybe maybe that's his nickname. He's taco, and this is okay, tacos, tacos enchiladas, enchiladas. But then the en enchiladas is. I feel like taco they have Vega. This is my wife, enchilada Vega. <laughs> 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 the tacos and enchiladas. <laughs> but I I, I, uh, I usually watch the episodes, you know, the, in the afternoon when I'm uh, leaving work before the stream, and when I came up to this frame i'm like wait a minute this is wrong i didn't want to rewind it but i'm glad you stopped it like right here because it bothered the <laughs> hell out of me <laughs> no but this is like this is a really really dumb meaning it has to be a really dumb person in the art department that they would do this sign and it yeah. surprises me that nobody would then say this is just awful like what is this Somebody well, should have happened. picked up on this. I understand that maybe people are more into uh, Mexican food today than they were maybe in the late 80s. But even in the late 80s, people knew what tacos were and they didn't think right. they, they had an apostrophe. Well, especially in California, where there were lots of food trucks that would actually yeah, happen. Right. Right. This is so, like the one place exactly. that shouldn't get wrong. This is basically someone in the <laughs> yeah. art department screwed up. They put it up there. I guarantee you someone pointed it out. And, and they like, said, can we get some white paint to cover that up? And they're like, right. we don't have any. And it's like, screw it. Just shoot. <laughs> we'll have to wait for the special edition. The truth is, is probably nobody noticed it aside from us now. Like for, <laughs> I probably for all these um, decades, nobody noticed it. But now that we've, such a hurry to get it now down. that we've paused it, it looks awful. Put it on the goofs <laughs> in the IMDb. There you go. <laughs> so this is the part he's like, yeah, my son, my son, or whatever it is. Right. Mi, yeah. mi hijo, mi hijo. It's uh, muy inteligente. I'm actually annoyed that they don't have quesadillas. <laughs> How do you know that? Possessive they ones. Possessive ones, yeah. Possessive ones, yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> In <laughs> Enchiladas is a complicate, a much more complicated dish to have out of a, 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 a truck. Yeah. Yeah. In this place, tacos own you. <laughs> or tacos eat you. <laughs> uh, and then he's talking to him about his, I guess, whatever. They're they're eating food. I like this little. I like this little montage. I think it started out almost like the right stuff. Of, I don't know if it was slow mo, but they started. The players started to get on the field, and they were walking towards the the. I don't know any of the sports terminologies. I'm not a sports guy, but. The, the line of scrimmage, whatever the hell that is. Mm, and then they, mm -hmm. they, they <laughs> there you go. Um, but I like this little sequence because it was back and forth. It was these guys. It was the players. It was some action. It was some throwing. It was some catching. Uh, I like that. Mm. It was some throwing. It was some catching. <laughs> it was some running. And I like this guy that, like, he's just telling you all this stuff. He's like, I just want tacos. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> I uh, need a taco here. Yeah. Remarking at the guy not wearing protective head covering to get the hair out of the food. <laughs> right. Baseball well, cap, hairnet, yeah. whatever. Just something. Put a hat on. <laughs> Yo quiero well, quesadilla. Now I'm hungry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then uh is that the, I was just saying what this guy was saying with the taco, right? Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I want a possessive taco, please. Mm. <laughs> I want a taco that wants me as much as I want it. <laughs> the chat is having fun with this one. And then as those guys are eating a quesadilla, uh, I think that at this point, is this the part that he already tells them, listen, you got to start winning and not being a bum. And then there's the thing where I think that, that Sam understands or Al explains it to him that if he quits and this guy sees that he quit, 
he'll he'll suddenly have a a, a change Angel, of yeah. heart yeah. because he won't want his friend who's like a brother to him to ruin his life because this guy decided to throw the game. So Chewy, at this point, is, Chewy has so, faked an injury. He's been sitting out most of the Right, time. right. He's been faking an injury, but now finally... Uh, I just realized he looks like a Mexican Fred Savage. <laughs> See? He does. A little, yeah. yeah <laughs> the other does. thing that bothers me is why is the team performing so poorly with only one of their players off the field? <laughs> because, again, they made it all the way to the state championship game. They should all be really good. It shouldn't just be relying on these two guys. True. Is that They're is that like too cliche? Chewy, it's a big yeah. cliche. It's, it's a big it's, cliche. It's, yeah, I was gonna say, is that too cliche them. where they have like the the um, what do you call it the 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 star player and he's the one that kind of carries the the rest of the team. Yeah, it's kind of cliche. Yeah, it's yeah. very well, cliche, it's especially when the star there. player does look like Fred Savage. <laughs> I Ron, think Ron, they're Ron, uh, Ron coined my phrase. Blood hole. <laughs> I think that they're all um, they're all pretty good. We're just not seeing it because the end of the game, it's only a difference of one point. Right. True, but we've seen so many like easy fumbles and like a guy drops like doesn't hit the ball, just bounces off of his fingertips. Yeah, I like, think I don't that's know. more on Sam. Football games, those are really rare to to see from teams that get that far ahead. Um, so I have a way we can logic this though because. Sam doesn't seem to be exceptionally good at throwing that football. <laughs> so I think that he it's just that him. this player, um, you know, Chewy is just so skilled that he still is able to catch those passes, even though they're not that good. He he can run that extra little bit, leap that little extra more. Um, but Sam isn't throwing the best passes. And so that I think the rest of the team are just struggling with that. Mm. Maybe. Nick, Nick, can you also logic the possessive quesadillas? <laughs> no, no, I can't do that. <laughs> well, by the way, That's I, I wanted to just bring this comment because Lisa, Lisa Katryan says that she heard that the footage is from a real game and then they made the uniforms to match and intercut the footage. It's possible. That would, that would save some money. I'd have to hire all the actors to play ball. Mm-hmm. That's actually Usually that would be would smart, and and this, this show thing. we've seen in a number of occasions that they actually do act in a smart way when it comes to their budgets and their production. Frugal, frugal. Well, this one has a bit more special of. Uh, well, this one is like a bit less on the special effects, but a lot of the wide shots and stuff, it matches way too well for it to be mixed footage. Hmm. I mean, uh, unless they, sh- yeah, this actually looks. A little bit more grainy and soft right. than the close-up shots. So this is almost like. See, this is a little bit more clearer. And this, this is, does look this a looks bit more like, grainy. This could have been. I mean, I I'll. Uh, uh, B-roll. It's like but like, like um, no stuff there. That is that's yeah. the same lens and that's the same. Everything. <laughs> yeah, a lot of these shots are the same. I I don't know what to tell you, but. It seems like a lot of it really was shot. It doesn't look like it's because there's so much of Sam. So and Scott Bakula. Then, in any case, uh, they end up at the end. Uh, he does the right thing. They win the game. They they uh, manage to do a turnaround. They win because Sam took himself out of the game, and that's what convinced Chewie. Right. Then Chewie is like, I can't let you ruin everything. And then finally, they do the right thing. They win the game, and now. Uh, Eating more oh, tacos. He's Tex, eating one Tex, of those possessive tacos. Yeah. So. Tex wanted to mention uh, the Super Bowl comment. I was going to mention the Super Bowl comment, but I have no frame of reference since I'm not a sports guy. But I thought maybe they did a little uh, fast forward future ish kind of thing with the Super Bowl because didn't they say it was Super Bowl 50 or something? I don't Super know. Super Bowl 30, which had been 96. And they got the right teams by chance. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. Interesting. And also, I think the uh, Steelers were down by three twice in that game, if I'm not mistaken. Anyhow, uh, Sam Comes Taco. And uh, (laughs) uh, then now this is the funny part. I mean, he arrives and he's like, I'm going to make sure you're out on the street. You got nothing. And then this guy is like, 
yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you owe? I'll pay. I'll pay your bill. And he said, I can't let you pay for me. And then uh, basically, Sam, Sam gets the idea to say, just take their stuff and bring it into our place. Put right. Our take their stuff, bring it into our place. And I then, found it. Uh, I found it weird that Sam said, and then your mom can sleep with my dad. We're like, what? I know. Well, the like, way he said that was like, so awkward. Awkward. We're talking about yeah, my mom yeah. like that, and he's like, but what if she's my mom too? <laughs> and right. he's like, whoa. I'm like, and that completely solves it. He changes his mood in a second. He's like, "Listen, I want to mess you up now." And then he's like, "No, though, well, she'll be my mom too." And he's like, "Oh, awesome!" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then there's a big, big uh, fiesta like, divertida. divertida. In any action. That's what's going right. to happen. Yep. Sure. No, uh, no, 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 this, this is the thing I wanted to talk about earlier. Um, so this guy, I have been hired by people like this and I've, I've walked off of jobs, but there are people that um, make it a point to just rent um, empty spaces and stuff to, to illegals so that when they can get a better rent, they can kick them out without any recourse. Yeah. And, um, you know, she, she's not, um, you know, he's basically holding that over that he can, he can get her deported and, and she has no legal recourse. And the, the idea of like guys showing up and they're just going to throw her stuff out in the yard, like that kind of stuff still to this day, uh, happens, uh, especially here in California. There's, there's a lot of that and it's just. Um, and what's amazing to me is there's so many laws to protect tenants and not enough to protect landlords, but then guys like this, they're working completely outside of the law because the tenants can't go to law enforcement. And so it's just, it's just a very scummy thing to see, uh, people, people do this kind of thing. And, um, so I've, I've met multiple guys like this and they're just, they're, they're, they're scummy, uh, people as can be yep i've seen them too all over and i've seen the i've seen the opposite i've seen the ones where they don't pull those tactics but what they do is they just don't do anything with regards to the upkeep and responsibilities of the yep. property mm. and it's like yeah. and it's all on the tenants dot side to do it and then they're out money trying to keep the place livable and the landlord's just like just keep paying me or i kick you out <laughs> Yeah, I, I had one where the family didn't even know what was happening, and the guy said, "Well, go ahead and rekey the house. Don't give them the keys, and and at a certain point, I'm going to ask them to come out and talk to me, and then while I'm doing that, I want you to go lock all the doors." Jeez, and I'm like, I'm not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> like, just these people. It, it, uh... yeah. Well, because it... you know what, a lot of them do when they do lock them out, they then sell all the possessions inside and they keep that mm. cash. Yeah. Yep. A lot of bad people in the world, and uh, mm -hmm. in this case here, he says, oh, the immigration is going to come to take her away, but then Sam says, don't worry, uh, my dad's a citizen, so when he marries your mom, uh, everything is going to be fine. So then the guy's like, yeah, that's cool. And then uh, the last thing that happens is is that uh, Ruben is... Jaguars. Right. Now he tells him to do that uh, that football... I don't know what you, what would you it's call a that three thing, yeah. Celebration. And then, and then this is the second time we see this jump uh -huh. to, to this episode, which is why I found kind of weird. Uh -huh. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe that they reran it for the second time. I guess it's a good episode, and maybe people were just getting into the show, and it was like another season, so they just said, uh, "F it, let's just show it again." They Tequila. might not have had the footage for the next one ready. Right, that's also uh, possible, but maybe yeah, well, script the knows. January release. It was a January air, so they probably had to had to uh, do a rerun. Do a, do a do a week break in order to make sure they met their their February, um, February, uh, March, and April uh, scheduled dates. So, so, I'm just looking like when was the next one after that? Yeah, the next one was February seventh. So they had to have three weeks of reruns between. Oh, that explains between episodes. So that's probably what they did. <laughs> 
Tex is asking what we're talking about. It's the 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 next yeah the driving Miss Daisy episode. This is like the second time that we've seen a preview of that episode. See where Sam? Yeah, actually, it's technically the third because there's the first one when he leaps into it, which is normal. Right. And then we've seen two other times where he leaps back into that body mm -hmm. at the end of an episode because of the airing schedule and what they were doing there. But one day, someone will take all of these episodes. They will fix the <laughs> spelling errors on tacos and. Um, oh God! And then they'll that. feed and it through AI, yeah. and they will match up it, all it, the words into the right body. <laughs> they'll feed it through AI. They'll put it in widescreen for price. Finally, <laughs> and, and unfortunately, though AI will be you know politically correct, and they will call them tacos X and enchilada X. <laughs> 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 Somebody just shivered. Now it'd be me. <laughs> I think it was all of us. <laughs> it was so bad that Nicholas' window just turned black all of a sudden. Oh, <laughs> again. he's in that van again. <laughs> he's in Sun the sun has fallen. <laughs> he's in that special van. I am, I am thankful that I'm in this van. It's been in the shop all day. Seven hundred bucks later, I, I almost thought I was going to be recording this from the <laughs> rental van from U-Haul. Oh no! <laughs> it would have just well, been me sitting in a blank like, van. Nineteen ninety-nine. <laughs> you you just need that kind of brown van, the one we saw from last week, right? <laughs> With the dark windows, you really need that one. Mm. Backyard oh, logo, yeah. backyard artist logo. <laughs> It would have been great if they even had like a backyard TARDIS logo on it. On At least it would have given them some legitimacy. All right. Uh, I'm going to have to screen grab that frame and then send you an email, Nick. Do, okay. do a little Photoshop. Well, I guess we got to the end of this episode. Uh, it seemed because of the game, it kind of took less than usual. Mm -hmm. uh, so th this is good because... You know, I know Tex Rogers usually has a busy schedule on Thursday nights, and this Glad will give we, him some extra time, yeah. extra time to... to Glad do, we got it in under 60. To, to, to do whatever only, Tex Rogers does. we're only does. three minutes late. Right. 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 <laughs> Tex should be uh, happy. Te Tex is going to be happy this time. I, I, I can feel it. In any case, uh, I guess let's just go... Uh, <laughs> Ron's uh, <laughs> comment... Enchiladas that identify as quesadillas. <laughs> That's actually funny. Yeah. <laughs> I like that, Ron. That's a good one, Ron Donofero. So, so see, uh, you could do a burrito that identifies as an enchilada as a wet burrito. Right. Lisa Catrines as the murder van. Yep. Anyhow, um, I guess let's just go one by one and just talk about how you felt about the episode. Let's start with you, Sean. What did you think about this week's episode? It's fine. It's a solid episode. I'm uh, I'm not my uh, Latino sensibilities are not offended in any way. <laughs> uh, it's a solidly written story and got the job done. And it's keeping with having like a theme based on a popular movie or or television show. Script. How did you feel about the show? Uh, it's an okay one. It's 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 a lot thinner compared to some previous episodes we've seen thus far, but simple enough to get things across. I mean, last week's episode was kind of special effects heavy, heavy so you had a lot of more going on there. This one here is, is a reasonable one. It's good, good heart. Um, yeah, I think it's a, it's a solid one. It's a decent one to show people for their first time uh, watching Quantum Leap. I did like seeing Al trying to block the football players. Uh, yeah, that was a good Sam. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All yeah. right, Ro, what did you think about it? I thought it was decent. Um, you know, the one thing that entertained me was all the Mexican stuff. I'm like, yeah, we don't do that. We don't do that. No, we don't do that. <laughs> but I, you know, I thought it was. Uh, I thought it was. Uh, I thought it was okay. It wasn't as strongly written as uh, some previous episodes. Um, I think it was a little thin, um, but uh, I, you know, I enjoyed it for what it was. Well, I mean, uh, I I think that maybe during that time, as far as the, and I'm not, I I wouldn't know, but I'm saying, as far as those years when they tried to do an episode that they said, okay, let's make it more about a Mexican family, they they, I think that a lot of times they they kind of didn't really know all the details or 
there's something very Hollywoodish about it, and they don't really bother to make it seem a little more authentic. I've seen worse than what we see in this episode. I, I would say that at least it's nice that they made some kind of effort, but uh, it's certainly not the best either. By, by playing La Bamba? Yeah, I mean, it, it's no, it's not like it's bl- it's not blood in, blood out or anything. This actually uh, feels kind of... Uh, uh, Mickey Mouse version of uh, what a Mexican family would probably be, but again, they tried, and uh, I, I do think that at least the characters, the villain with the mustache and all that stuff, I thought that those were good. I just don't think that they, you know, really delivered with a hundred percent Mexican, whatever. But it is what it is. Uh, Nick, what did you think about it? Um, some similar thoughts. Um, in some ways, though, I, I, I kind of like it because of the fact that it's not as heavy, um, you know, they could have really gone into it and made the episode more about, um, you know, Oh, you know, this is the only way as, uh, especially for the time period that as Mexicans, we can get into college or, you know, they, they didn't really make it a PSA. Mm-hmm. That was just kind of, the backdrop to you know it, it was equally about football and there that but there was that thing that was a very real struggle that happens with a lot of ones where um i know a lot of kids that don't have their parents here because their parents come here they have the kids then they get riled up and you know they have one family member an aunt or uncle or something that is a citizen and so they live with them until their parents sneak back into the country and it, and it, or, or a lot of times they'll come on a work visa and then not leave when they're supposed to, but it, it, it's a complicated situation, but the way that they're getting taken advantage of, I liked just how that they did that. And I also liked that they showed something that does happen that doesn't get pushed a lot in media is that the guy that's the sleazeball is also, you know, uh, Latin descent and he's you know he's taking advantage of them because he understands he's part of that community but he's he's manipulating it for his own gain that actually is probably one of the best parts of the episode I actually thought that having a scumbag like that that knows the position they're in and takes advantage of them was maybe one of the strongest things in the screenplay make them extra scummy (laughs) that that was the one thing they, they brought the actor that looked scummy he acted scummy. They wrote him scummy. I think that all of that, in my opinion, worked. Who uh, was who was scummier, this guy or the uh, the the child perverts in last week's episode? This well, guy. I mean, th- th- those guys didn't really have like much of a character arc. They just showed up every time there was a little kid somewhere and smirked. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, the other part too is the whole reason that that mom, that Sam, as that mom, was able to beat them up is because she was technically topless. You know, they, <laughs> that's <laughs> right. They were they were, dis- the they were distracted. They were distracted. <laughs> Be careful, <laughs> Sam. That knife might be sharp. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah what a weird way to say. <laughs> <laughs> I love this show. I don't know why the previous one, the previous one wasn't supposed to make us laugh so much, but until now, I'm just thinking of the previous one and I'm <laughs> They're just cartoon characters, man. But I, I was do... hoping you were gonna do a voice where, where you see them and they're like Ugh. <laughs> I should have done it, but they I didn't even know what they they didn't talk, they kind of just looked at each other, so I didn't know. But yeah, I mean they, they were so ridiculous, it was it was over the top comical, but still effective. I don't know how, but it was. But mm-hmm. is so as fun as this episode is, though, for for this week's, um, I did get a laugh. Having, you know, and, and Ro can speak more to this, but just having grown up in that kind of culture and stuff like that, um, just kind of the 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 stereotypical like uh, Spanish phrases. It's 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 kind of like what price is done on this you know i was like oh i know i know how to say this word or that word and you know but they're not actually i actually, I actually think spanish. that my spanish was better than this episode spanish to be honest <laughs> yeah i can attest <laughs> I'm to that like, i'm thinking of la and, and like the culture there and and just you know how large the hispanic communities are I'm like how how could they just nail you know episodes about the deep south <laughs> But they couldn't 
they couldn't go out and consult somebody yeah. for this stuff. Right. Yeah, I mean, they didn't make much an e- much of an effort here. I think that they could have done better, but I don't know. I, it seems like maybe, but maybe at the same script- time, it's just fun. It's just fun. They it's been fun. Been it's fun. It's a fun episode. <laughs> but but maybe script knows, you know, the kind of schedule they had. Maybe it seems like maybe sometimes they're in such a rush. The tacos have an apostrophe. The <laughs> you know Spanish is half assed. Maybe they just don't have time. The other part too is you never know. They may have actually rented a taco truck that had that banner. <laughs> on <Yes. it. laughs> they just did not want to touch it or anything. Mm-hmm. Like you, um, you just never know. I mean, there's weird stuff that happens in production all the time. You can never be a hundred percent sure. And it only takes one thing to go wrong to actually have the whole thing collapse. It is literally a house of cards. So this this is how I could see something like that happen. Like if they if they took it somewhere to have their van labeled and uh, and lettered, and they did it wrong, but it was going to cost X amount of dollars to have it fixed, they just leave it. <laughs> yep, it was I very guess. profound. Some like a profound statement on a poster. Sometimes I'll, the talk uh, as an I'll accept read. that in my head canon <laughs> that they when the the printer didn't print it right. Well, here's the other part, too. You never get a proper full wide shot of the taco truck. You just get Mm-mm. the cab. Right. It, it might just be a plywood box. Right. <laughs> might, or it might be an existing taco truck with a lot of current day uh, deck decals or stuff on it. And that's the only part there that was not current day that could pass for 1962. And it just so happened to have spelling mistakes. <laughs> but by the way, uh, Tex Rogers is bringing up something. He says, Nick, that you wrote instead of... Uh... Backyard Tardis, you wrote Backyard Tadris or something. Terridit, Terrid, Terrid, Terrid. Yeah, yeah a little yeah, typo there. Tarids right now, yeah. Tex In Rogers is really a stickler <laughs> for the <laughs> little details. <laughs> I'll fix it next time. Hey, Tech Rogers keeps us real, man. He, he keeps us on our toes. Time oh, and yeah, relatively eye, dimensional the space. Eye is supposed to be it, yeah. yeah. But he is right. Yep. I can't say that. I'll tell you what. So one time I made, like, I think in the description, a mistake in something. Nix Rogers told me that I made a mistake. And he was right. I, I did make a mistake. I don't know. If he wouldn't have told me, I don't think anybody would have ever noticed until this day. But he wasn't wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give him that. He was right. Plot hole. Plot hole. <laughs> uh, Thank you, Ron. Always a chuckle. And uh, and yes, the text we kid, but of course we're always happy to see you here. And uh, I guess you know we've gone through this episode. I think there, were, like you guys said, it was a simple one. Sometimes we have episodes we talk about them for another thirty minutes, but I feel like this one it does what it does, and uh, it's simple, it's to the point, and it gets the job done. I don't know if it's the best episode, but it's certainly a pleasant one, and and not a bad one. And I guess on that note, we can just go one by one. Sean, is there anything you want to plug before we go? Mm, Stickers on the Etsy and the YouTube channel. I'm trying to come up with something new to do. Uh, So just go check out all the old videos. And in the meantime, I'm trying to do comic book stuff. So hopefully look for something from that soon. And Super Mario Brothers 3 is here, which is always nice. He showed up. Uh, always nice to see them. Him, him, her, him. I'm going to go with him. What do I know? Uh, and then, uh, yeah, so it's uh, realshawncrummel.etsy.com. Wait, no, sorry. It's realshawncrummelart.etsy.com. Correct. Did I get it right? Mm-hmm. Correct. And I always Ding. put it, I put these things in the links in the description too. So you'll be able to find this link in the description. And I suggest you go to Sean's store, see whatever stickers he has, buy them, and then stick them on your walls. You guys should get <laughs> you guys should get five of these because these are such an amazingly detailed, wonderful image. Get five of them and stick them in your neighborhood. So only you will know what it means. Here, I see that that Backyard Tardis is actually, uh, Nicholas has put uh, a link in the description here. So Sumo Taco, I think it's appropriate. Summon Summon. Summon Summon Taco. taco. Summon Taco, taco, yeah. It's only one taco, though. So If you like magic, (laughs) the black arts, and tacos. 
So the link Maybe here you is. Maybe need to redo a, a new print with the S on there. <laughs> well, yeah, the, the for the show, yeah. yeah, you need, the, you need to do taco with the apostrophe S. Of the, yeah. uh, out of the actual taco. So basically, uh, Backyard Tardis put the link to Sean's store in the description here, and you guys should check it out. Uh, Script, do you have anything you want to plug? Uh, just this Saturday, Script on Saturday show. Go check it out. We've we've had some interesting screens, screenplays we've discussed the last few weeks. Actually, every show has been a fantastic show. So go go check that out. We last week we had a comedy that was actually funny. And mm. well, well, and uh, to compliment what Script has just said, Backyard Tardis uh, has put a link to Script's YouTube in the chat. You guys oh, should you. Ma- make sure you're following Script and that you're getting notifications so when he does his show you can check it out because it's really great and something unique and i think uh the people watching this would enjoy such a show uh because they're they're of high quality the people in this chat <laughs> i think don't, they're high don't. quality that's that's my take in any case I would say don't laugh after that they are <laughs> no they, they are i just suddenly i heard myself talking and i thought to myself you sound kind of weird and pretentious and snooty and then I started laughing, but they are of high quality. I really do like the people here. That that was real. <laughs> in, in any case, uh, next we <laughs> next we have Ro. Ro, what are you working on? Um, so you know, a whole bunch of us are uh, prepping for May's uh, an important month in the world of Star Wars. So we have a twenty fifth anniversary of Star Wars Episode One. Um. A quarter of a century ago, 1999. So it's a long time. So we're just uh, prepping some shows about uh, talking about that uh, that uh, the first prequel. Uh, love it, hate it, what you thought of it. And we'll uh, we'll be discussing that uh, different aspects of the show: music, hype, actors, story, yada yada yada, for the month of May with different um, podcast guests on our show. Cool. Sounds interesting. I yeah. uh, think you guys should check it out. Uh, you put back backyard TARDIS. You put in the link here, so you guys can check it out to Rose uh, channel. And then finally, put your own links here, Nick. I hope you're putting in both Adventures in Locksmithing and the Backyard TARDIS channel, also known as the Backyard Tarids channel. <laughs> <laughs> At least this week, as Tex Rogers pointed out but uh yeah no put your stuff uh i see you put adventures and locksmithing but put the other one too give him a minute he's on his phone <laughs> <laughs> i know really faster nick faster <laughs> you gotta do the whole link on your phone you got <laughs> right s i equals he's working um, as fast as he can but uh so continuing on my adventures and locksmithing uh, having having fun with that. It's been eviction season, so I've got a lot of eviction <laughs> ones. I did one uh, just uh, two days ago where I showed up and there they literally had a giant truck with a a, a dump truck with a trailer behind it, completely full. And then when we entered the apartment, it looked as if nothing had been taken out. There was so much stuff inside. Oh, wow. I was like, there's no way that was in there. It, it can't possibly fit. Where did they live? But Where it was just, that? it was just an insane amount of stuff. <laughs> so <laughs> having fun there. And then uh, I did another on my uh, uh, backyard charters channel. I did another um, death battle reaction of Vader versus, I think it was Obito. I, I'm not very yeah, well versed. I, in I saw too. that. I saw that one today. And uh, oh, and you were you talking. About, you were talking please. about burritos in that one. Were they possessive? Yeah, yes. <laughs> but uh, uh, definitely, uh, I, I really liked how they they worked out the the battle animation. So, if for anything else, uh, skip forward and check out that part. All right. Yeah, I I've checked out a few videos uh, that you've posted this week, and uh, one I I was really puzzled by, but then you explained it to me. <laughs> and uh, there's always interesting stuff going on on your channel. Uh, I hope you guys all check out what all these guys are doing here. And uh, 
as as for my myself uh tonight at 11 45 p.m i'm going to be doing a, a night owl stream with my friend dread roberts uh that's more of a broader kind of pop culture discussion uh and gaming and uh perhaps you'll find it enjoyable so uh, i guess on that note uh we'll sign off uh wait i have to pull up the outro and and before we go i want to thank the people that i saw here i hope i don't forget anybody but we have ronda nefaro lisa katryan we have matthew marcillo we have uh jeremy winfield we have tex rogers uh super mario brothers 3 i'm trying to think if if i miss somebody What's i know tripping, tripping orc, orc was here at some point i know Tri tripping orc was here uh if i've missed anybody i'm truly sorry but i think that i got a lot of people at least a high percentage of people were mentioned oh melvin deeply thank you also so on that positive note we're gonna play our outro uh, and that'll be the end of our show. And we'll, of course, see you here next week for another episode of Quantum Leap Revisited. And thank you all for joining us. Uh, always great to have you here. And you all have a great night. I just need to find that outro. I'm such an awesome